Hello and happy new year and welcome to another episode of Character Unlock. Yes, we are starting with the worst possible way to a year for a character unlock, and that's I'm hosting John Miller. Uh, as one uh, of the worst ways. Yeah, I mean Lee made it pretty clear that he hates all of the ones that I host for some strange reason. Uh, well, we'll make it's a quick one then, so he doesn't have to waste too much of his time. There we go. Uh, joining me again, Mr. Brooker. How are we? I am good, mate. I am good. How was your Christmas? Christmas was pretty good. The, the the road and path to today has been pretty shit. <laughs> but I'll get more into that later. It has been an up and down couple of days. Hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really has. Brooks, how's, how's it been for you? Mm. Yeah, it was how, all right. It was how right. are your testicles? Fine. <laughs> they're fine. They're, uh, yeah, they're lucky to still be around, I think. <laughs> There's a thing, right? So I I done that thing where that everyone does like day after Boxing Day and they just sit watching the TV going through deals on the Boxing Day sales and spending money like I really shouldn't be. Uh and yeah, I got into a lot of trouble this year. Well, <laughs> yeah, to, to be fair, it wasn't this year. Oh no, it, it was, was last year. year. This is true. Exactly. It's so, a clean slate now. Yeah, I've been told no spending in 2018, so Oh, That's fine. You spent oh. all the money you needed to in 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 2017. <laughs> spent all the money I had, <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. It was fucking brilliant. So I, I, I think it must have been Boxing Day. It must have been. I mean, it might have been just before Boxing Day that I actually made the decision I was going to buy a uh, Switch. And <clears throat> sat there, found myself a deal with a couple of games and a little carry case for it as well, so it doesn't get all scratched. And put me order in. Day after Boxing Day, I get uh, an email to say it's been dispatched and it should be with me tomorrow. So I tell the missus, Switch will be here tomorrow. Awesome. Can't wait. Uh, <laughs> a little bit later on, <laughs> like, tactically, just as she's taking Nikita up to bed, I say, oh, yeah, we're getting another delivery tomorrow. Uh, if you could just wait in for it, please. And I didn't tell her what it was. <laughs> but oh, but she didn't ask. <laughs> That's kind of half her fault. It's, I, 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 I say it's all her I, fault. It wouldn't stand up in court. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the t- I mean, for the, the trial of your murder, that, that's, yeah. but he didn't tell me what the delivery was. <laughs> so the day after comes along, and I'm at work. I've not got, I'm not allowed to have my phone at work, so basically communication between us is stuttering between crappy emails while I'm trying to do stuff. Uh, get an email. Oh, I missed your delivery. It's at the local post office. I was like, okay. Which one? I was like, well, I was like, it's at the local post office. That would be the switch. Yeah, there's like, no way the local post office would just take something the size of a TV. <laughs> just so, out of the back of the van. Just, just so, put it through, try and pass it through that little window. I'm still being really coy, going, there's more to come. I've just seen the thing. It's going to be with you by three o'clock. I say, if you could wait in for it, please, that'd be really good. Yeah, but I thought that was the switch. No, no, it's other stuff. Don't worry. <laughs> I get the email going, there's just been a television delivered to the house. Which, dude, I just, I wish I was a fly on the wall. When it happened, I wish I could have seen her face when she opened the door. <laughs> and this this just, is just a man holding a TV a, going, dude, there you go. A dude holding a TV that's like twice the size of the one I currently own. <laughs> going, here's your TV. <laughs> and she's going, I didn't order a TV. <laughs> but I did. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, I, I went and bought a TV. My Christmas present to myself, along with a Switch. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm lucky to be alive, and uh, and uh, I'm surprised you still have all your limbs. Yeah, I'm surprised I still have all my limbs and my testicles and my head, and yeah. You haven't. Well, you probably have been poisoned, <laughs> just in, very slowly. In fairness, I have a very, very, very cool wife, and she's not actually <laughs> likely to kill me for it. But 
I don't think I'll ever be allowed to buy anything ever again. I shall wait till you've been at the work for long enough that you get that delicious um, death in service benefit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Then, then you don't stand a chance. <laughs> so yeah, Christmas, you know, Christmas Day actually kind of sucked, but after that, it got much better when I kept buying myself things. <laughs> yeah, that was literally that was pretty much my Christmas. Just bought a TV, went to work. Yep. Didn't tell wife. Didn't tell wife. I find it easier that way. <laughs> it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Again, not something you should use in court. <laughs> but yeah, it was a. Uh, it's nice though. Like finally playing a couple of 4K games and and watching a couple of 4K films. It's been a long mm-hmm. time coming. I've been planning this for far too long. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was it was nice. It's not the best TV in the world, but it's nice. It's yeah, the thing is though, as soon as you go back to seeing something in just like regular HD, you look at it and go, oh, "This is shit." I, I don't <laughs> want to be a 1080 peasant anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, seriously, there's a number of games I've played where I've looked at it and gone, "Boy, am I glad that the TV's working over time with the fucking HDR." Well, I, when we get to what we've been playing, I've I've, I've finished a game and moved on to another. Uh, the second game I played on my TV is a fucking backwards compatible Xbox 360 game from 2008. It does not look good. <laughs> you mean it's not Xbox One X enhanced backwards compatible it like really, Gears of War 3 for some reason? It really fucking isn't. It just looks terrible. But it plays so well, I can't fault it. But it looks so shit. But yeah, that's a, that's for a little bit down there down the road in the podcast, I think. Yeah. So, a continuation from Brooker's lovely story of uh, how his Christmas to New Year went from shit to amazing to the worst possible scenario to, you know what, it's kind of over now. Yeah. I'm going to go give you a nice tale of my Christmas to New Year and the, the last couple of days since. So, around Christmas time, just sort of... Uh, you know, spitballing on Twitter, as you may have seen, me, Brooker, and Lee, you know, talking about, you know, switches and all that. And I made the statement saying that once I see a switch drop down below a certain value, then, or a bundle below a slightly higher value, but still pretty cheap, then absolutely I'm jumping on it. A couple of days later, it was like the, the 28th of December, Lee, again, tweets up saying that he's just bought a switch for like 225 quid. And I'm like, cool. A question saying, was it uh, an Ow. eBay thing? <laughs> was, and he said, yeah, it's uh, eBay. I've got an end of year sale on. They just got a discount code that you apply, and then eBay they swallow the cost, so it doesn't. It's not affected to the retailer. You know, it's the exact sort of code that everybody loves. So I go looking, find a place, find uh, what I used to consider to be a pretty decent company. Used to shop on them a lot. Actually, the place where me and Brooke have actually met Lee in the first place on their little news forums. Ah, uh, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day when we used to love our old job and we used to have fun. <laughs> and we met some relatively decent people who most turned out to be absolute twat bags, including Lee. But for some reason, Lee's got that little little nice edge to him that, you know, <laughs> that, that warm and fuzzy personality that he has. Yeah, let's go with his warm and fuzzy facial hair. Yep. You just want to give him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> so, I took a look, and there's there's two. There's the one that I went with, and the uh, the neon one, which is from Argos, which is the one that Lee went with. I didn't want the neon one. I just there's something about the red and blue controller that I just I just I don't like that I blue controller. I don't like the red one. I think that's the reason why I probably don't want to go with the uh, the red one that you go in with. So I, I don't know. I just there's something about that blue controller on like the right-hand side, where the other side is red. Like, the it not being symmetrical makes me irrationally angry. <laughs> I really don't like it. But I think it's designed to be an obvious player one, player two controller. I yeah. don't... I, I would accept two shade controllers, but they just need to be the right colours. Yeah. Specifically for me, the Vikings colours, obviously. <laughs> I would take a purple and gold one with like like that. That's, some, that's a pretty flashy right-hand controller you'd have there. Or I actually go as far as saying I'd probably go. I'd actually accept green and yellow, or what, Packers. 
Yeah. No, bright like neon green. Oh, okay. They have yellow ones. You can set. You can buy yellow, like bright yellow jo- uh, Joy Cons separately. Can you buy bright purple ones? I do not know. Doesn't really matter anyway, because it's like this, the well, controller. The story's not finished yet. <laughs> yeah. So I went with the company that I did, and so it's due to arrive tomorrow, as as we're talking right now. So on 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 podcast going live yesterday the 4th of january was the uh, penned in it's been a week so you know order goes to goes into ebay you pay with paypal up front through obviously through ebay so they've got the money and assuming and when when they have their the stock properly you know to ship out it's christmas you know you you expect it to be maybe a couple of extra days you, you don't you don't expect them to be posting something out and it arrive, you know, the next day. It's no. it's around that time of the year when you go. I'll order it. It'll arrive, you know, a couple of days after New Year's once the once the postal system sorted itself out. Yeah. So I was happy, paid my money. You know, I was out of the pocket at this point. As far as I was concerned, I had a switch on the way. So yesterday, afternoonish. It's uh, what was about maybe what four o'clock that I text you around about about it. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a little bit later. I think I was at the cinema, so I kind of yeah. I felt it beep and then ignored it. Yeah. So it was um, it was a uh, around about four o'clock. I no, it's, actually it was probably actually it was a bit later. It was probably about six. I'd say yeah. About six o'clock, I get a, an email pop up on my phone, and uh, then later a little uh, notification from eBay. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, cool, my uh, my my shipment's on its way. Didn't think much of it. A bit later on, I checked my phone properly, so maybe like 20 minutes, because I was in the middle of playing a game. So maybe 20 minutes later, I, uh, I look at my phone, and the, the message from eBay is, it's, uh, you've been refunded. I'm thinking, A, hey, why, why have I been refunded? And uh, Free switch? I was like, yeah, thinking that. And uh, the email I get is, we're sorry to let you know that shop to outlet cancelled your order and mentioned the reason as buyer asked to cancel the order. <laughs> now, not exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting a switch. At no point in my, at any point did I think, you know what, I need to cancel this order for my switch. Because, well... At this point, I was considering buying a load of fucking accessories. It was <laughs> dumb luck that I completely forgot while I was in the game store trading in my Xbox to say to the, the lovely lady behind the counter, oh, the, that Switch carry case there and a couple of other like Switch stuff. You know, yeah, I've just bought a Switch, so I kind of want some accessories. You know. Would have been a bit shit, wouldn't it, to end yeah. with you know, uh, a carry case and a screen protector for yep. a machine you don't own. Carry case, screen protector, the uh, extra charging station, yeah, and the uh, oh, and the pro controller. <laughs> Just a random dock with a controller hanging out of it with no switch. Yep. <laughs> and the the pro controller as well, because uh, I, just on the for the times when it's sitting there and it's not and I'm playing on the TV, I'd, Have you I'd seen not. The price of that fucking thing. It is fucking expensive. Sixty five quid Nintendo charge for that. Yep. It's, it's currently on sale in Argos for 50 quid. Yep. On sale. Up your ass. Like, I really want one because I want it for things like Bayonetta and Splatoon and stuff like that. But not for 65 fucking pound. I could buy two PlayStation controllers for that. Or, or put it towards an, half of an Elite controller, but maybe not. Anyways, carry on. <laughs> yeah. So, from this, I'm like, that's not at all what I asked for. So I decided to look at the uh, the message that you get for when for uh, from from shop to themselves because they obviously have a, uh, a you know you have to send a message. You can't just cancel someone's stuff and you know not give a a, a reason. Yeah. So their response is, thanks for your recent order. Unfortunately, we no longer have stock available of this item and therefore your order has been cancelled. A refund is being processed. Please accept our apologies for any disappointment caused. 
Now, the disappointment is not the word I would have used for the, how I was feeling in this situation. No. I'd go with rage, livid, really fucking pissed off, <laughs> rather angry <clears throat> as, as a whole. Yeah. Don't know, fucking blame you. I've got, like... We we've, we've spoken about this before. I've got zero time for fucking shop to net. Absolute cunts, every one of them. Yep. I because uh, like you, I used to be a proper. Right, all my games I used to buy from shop to. They were always good. Always got the game to me early or on time. They were fantastic. And then I got into a fucking spat with the guy that owns it on their uh, chat pages, and he then started putting my fucking personal information into the public forums. Yep. So I. Uh, yeah, I called him all the cunts under the sun and I'm now blocked by them on Twitter and I got my account banned. I had to open another account when I wanted to, to use a deal on their, their website. Yeah. Fuckers. So, so that's... So f- I naturally... I let myself cool down a little bit to send them a, an email. Starting with, disappointment's not the word that I would use. <laughs> because, well, quite frankly... It's not. <laughs> and so the best part about a whole lot of this is eBay has a counter system for retailers using it to say, this is how many we've got. People can't buy them once we go over this amount. Yeah. There was more than 44 left when I went to buy it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm they, guessing they uh, they just wrote random number into the box when they started the the listing, and it's then moves on to eBay uses a pay up front system. You, I was out of pocket from the twenty eighth to yesterday. By nearly 300 quid, well, 225 quid, because that's how much it cost in the end. Yeah. I was out of pocket from. Give it, put the vouchers that I've got, the trade in from my Xbox, and the st- presents that I got from, for Christmas from relatives when I said the only thing I want are vouchers because 90% of the stuff that I want is too expensive for you to buy or not out yet. Yeah. And therefore, I want, I'll buy it myself in when it comes around because it's the only way that I'm going to be able to get hold of this stuff it's a, it's a pretty sound strategy it's what I do when people ask me what I want uh, <laughs> unless you're actually going to go and buy me the games and things I want vouchers yeah. will do please unless you feel like spending 60 quid on a Switch game yeah then give me a £30 voucher <laughs> for Amazon yeah or however many that you feel like giving me so you've got like a secret Santa thing and £30 is the upper limit 90 times 90 percent of the time me and my brothers and sisters and laws we'd have the secret santa between them all between us all and my one was usually just a gift card because it's like i don't pre i don't need clothes no it's like, it's like i've got more clothes than i could actually fucking wear in a month yeah just sitting around <laughs> it's, it's, it's like and i, I don't it. i don't appreciate clothes no it's, when, when, it's, it's i think like I have this every year, Christmas, birthdays. What do you want for Christmas? Nothing. I don't fucking want anything. I'm a grown-up. I buy my own shit. It's fine. <laughs> you know, it? it's perfectly acceptable. If you want to get me some socks, I will have some socks, and they'll go in the drawer, and that's it. I, yep. d- I don't... I'm, I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> it's like socks, pants, maybe a funny T-shirt if it's got, like, an interesting joke, or it's a, a reference to something really obscure. Yeah. Like... Um, the Star Wars T-shirt that's rat that doesn't actually say Star Wars, but it's the Bohemian Rhapsody with the uh, the four main known villains yeah. porgs. in the picture, porgs or everywhere. porgs, yeah, or porgs, just like or like minions, for instance. Yeah, some that that that's a good present for someone who has literally everything they could want because they just fucking buy it when it comes out because. That's what adults do. Well, this is you it. don't sit there and go, "Oh, I better not get this because I might get something for Christmas." No one, no one bought me a Switch and a TV, so I bought it for myself. 
Maybe that was the problem. Maybe they were going to be your I presents. I did ask. I did ask if I could have a switch in the TV, and no one bought me it. So, yeah. There we go. Problem Disappointment solved. all round. So, further to the the shop two stories, they're like I'm out of pocket from the time, and I at this exact point, I could have very easily just gone. You know what? I've got 220 quid more than I was expecting to have at this time in the month. Yeah. I've got 70 pounds worth of uh, game vouchers. I've got 70 pounds worth of Amazon vouchers. I'm sure I could find someone that may want 70 pounds worth of Amazon vouchers or game vouchers, sell it to them, buy a Switch with the money that I've got in my house, in my hand right now, just walk into game. Uh, I could have traded in my Xbox, bought a Switch at the same time because I would have had the money because I wouldn't have been out of pocket. If Shop Two had just cancelled the order yeah. when it went in, because they were they didn't have enough stock, because they didn't have enough stock in the end. Uh, fuck, seriously, I, I mean, I I wouldn't ever buy anything big from Shop Two. Do you remember? Because they've got form for this. Do yeah. You remember when the was it the PlayStation Four? Wasn't the PS Four came out, and they randomly cancelled a guy's order because he gave them shit on Twitter. So they cancelled a guy's order and closed his account for him. And he kicked yep. up he kicked up a stink, didn't he? So he ended up getting the PlayStation from them for free as an apology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I wouldn't trust them with big ticket items. So I'm sitting here now, switchless. I've got my money back, which yeah, that's that's fine. Look, I've got my money back. But between the twenty eighth and yesterday, shop two had my money. <clears throat> that's crossing not only a month boundary but a year boundary. Yeah. Their bank manager sitting there rubbing his fucking hands <laughs> together going, "You know what?" But the fact is that there was more than 44 left when they when I went to buy it. How many do you think that they actually got in stock to sell? 3. Probably. They probably had less than 10. Yep. Nintendo are, are well known for only giving out a small batch. To, to, to companies, doesn't matter which company it is, you could be a fucking national retailer, Amazon for instance would probably only get like 50 at most yeah. bricks and mortar stores get more, but they will only get maybe 3 each, so every game store will get 3 So, ev- but every game store in the country there's a lot of those fuckers oh yes so you, so you turn up at your local and they go, oh sorry we don't have any oh phone up the one that's two miles down the road in Aylesbury. Oh, uh, you've got none left. Oh, okay, there's the one in Bedford. Oh, you've got two. Can you hold one to the side? Yeah, sure, we'll we'll hold one on. I'll be there in like 20 minutes because that's how fucking far away it is. Yeah. <laughs> you get that shit. Fucking shop two decide that they just want to fuck off a pro- possibly even a big group of people. Oh, yes. This, there's, there's no way you're the only person they've done that to. Well, if I was the only person they've done that to, it's because they fucking f- uh, followed me from the back in the day, and they've seen like, <laughs> and they've seen that I'm friends with you or something. Don't fucking blame me. <laughs> I'm not blaming. <laughs> but the absolute massive bunch of cunts. Oh yeah. And I'm going on. Re- I'm never buying anything from Shop Two again. I don't care anymore if they are the cheapest or the most reliable or they have a release date guarantee or before release date guarantee, like whatever the fuck it was that they used to have in back in the day. Yeah. Fuck them. They don't deserve, they don't deserve business. They're a massive shit company and they just, just fuck them. Yeah. Completely just fuck them because if they've had this, this, they've had a large number of people have bought these, all disappointed. Some of them probably haven't kicked up a stink. None of them have a public voice, like what apparently I've got now. Somehow I've been allowed a public voice. <laughs> of all the people in the fucking country to fuck over, you don't want someone who has people listening to them. <laughs> I like I like how you've made it sound like we're like the IGN podcast. We are better than IGN. <laughs> Uh, I am one hundred percent with you, mate. I won't. I don't buy from them, and I won't. But yeah, they they are cunt bags, absolute cunt bags. So, 
I'm just I'm just scrolling through my messages from Lee because um, because I told him about it when it yeah. when it when it happened when I got my thing my my uh, thing come through and um, he uh, he put his exact words were mate we met on the shop too fucking old school <laughs> and then his next one is shit now though got too greedy yep there we go quote from Lee the man with the greatest facial hair of all time that's right book I bet than yours I don't know how to respond to that <laughs> I'll kill you both yep and take our beards <laughs> just glue them onto yours yep so I'm livid and there should be a lot of fucking people who are also livid that they've just had 220 quid taken off of them sitting in shop two's account for god knows how long like a week over the christmas period over the new year's period yeah. there could have been it's like that's a lot of money that's just been sitting there over like over a year boundary over a month boundary so they've looked pretty good at it and then beyond that because they've refunded before release date uh before expected delivery date they look good on ebay as well yeah because they've refunded people before the the uh and they've very cheekily done it with a uh, customer requested a uh, requested cancellation because that's how they put it through because they ran out of stock. Yep. No, what you've done is you've run out of stock. So you've canceled a load of pre-orders instead of going, Ooh, you know what? We've got their money. Let's ask them if they're willing to wait or, Oh, we can't supply it to them through the eBay site. We've got their money. Let's ship them a free one from our regular store. Yeah. Or something similar, or give them a voucher for our store to buy one in the future. Yeah, because they're going to have more fucking units come up. Of course they are. It's like it's I I expect it in like a week's time. There'll be more fucking uh, switches on their on their fucking eBay site. They'll probably be more expensive as well. They probably saw that they just sold, apparently, like a hundred units for two hundred and seventy nine quid, and gone. Oh, let's uh, let's say we don't have enough stock. Let's cancel a load of orders. And then next week we'll put them back up, but we'll put them back up at two eighty nine yeah. or two ninety nine, because after a hundred units, that's a lot of fucking extra money. Yep. Well, guys, the biggest reason you got all those orders in the first place was because eBay were putting up a fucking voucher code at the end of the year. Yeah. They still, I mean, they still see the money, which is the pain in the ass of it. As much as we fucking hate them for it, they still see yeah. all that cash, and it's a, it's fucking terrible. It's. But yeah, an awful company. There's no two ways about it. Fuck them. Yeah. Want to find a fucking awful business? They're a greedy bunch of cunts, and they don't deserve my money. And I hope that anyone listening to this also agrees that what they've done is really fucking shit. And just fucking, if they see, if you see shop two, show up as a good deal, spend the extra money, go somewhere else. Yep. Yeah. You'll get a reliable service. I I've said this before. I know people shit on them a lot, but I really like game. I've got no problem with game. I don't mind paying their prices because I always get service out of them. I've never had a bad experience with game either online or in any of the at one point three game stores we had in Milton Keynes. <laughs> yeah, I I have no problem with them at all. And the fact that I can walk into a game store, I still like bricks and mortar places. Yeah, you know. And our local game stores, you know, it's run by decent people. I'd, I'd much rather pay a couple of quid extra and know it's paying decent people to do a good job, not yeah. cunt bags that shop too. Yeah, you walk into a game store, you buy a game, you're not feeding the pockets of a massive company, really. You're also helping the people who actually work there. Yeah, I mean, you kind of are. But the, the thing is, you're paying the wages of the guys that are behind the counter. And the guys that are behind the counter are always in a good mood. And they're always happy. They're always chatty you know i spent when when i went down and pre-ordered my one x the dude sat there and spent a half hour detailing what tv he'd bought because he was trying to recommend it to me i was like dude you're you're recommending me an 1800 pound tv if i could afford that i wouldn't be <laughs> trading in a console to buy another console <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I, one of the few things i do love game and I'll say this, if you buy something on their online store and you don't want it or you want a refund or you go and you buy it on their online store, it doesn't arrive on time. 
you don't have to send it back to their warehouses. You can walk into your local brick and mortar and just go, look, I can have a refund on this, please. Look, it's still in the wrapping. Here's the invoice. They will bleep that fucker and they'll give you the money. Yep. Yep. Because really it's 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 brilliant. And yeah, I I've heard lots of people complain about game, but all of their complaints have been things from the past, back when they were a a bit of a shit company. Oh, just it was around the time when they just bought GameStation, and you know the 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 big money crash happened. And, you know, the things went a bit shit. Yeah, I mean, but the, the, the prices are high even their yeah. online prices are high compared to amazon and shop two and but, but again you know i i have i've had crap service from amazon i've i've had fucking terrible service from shop two i haven't from game i'm willing to spend the extra couple of quid yeah. you know to get a good deal you know at some point in the next month or so i'm going to be nipping down to game to buy a ps4 pro i will go into game to do it yeah you know because why the fuck not <laughs> Well, you're pretty much, it's entirely on your own back if you drive home and it smashes well, as you it. get out of the car. I got it's like you're not, some... you're, not, you're, not, you're not trusting some random yodel man or some UPS man or yeah, I'm some come other. Home, find my console in my garden having been launched over the wall in the rain. <laughs> uh, do love some fucking courier companies where they just go, oh yeah, it's just another box, it doesn't say fragile on it. Straight over the fence into the pool, yeah. or or the brilliant ones where you get the the little red slip through the door saying "posted through window," and then a second red thing saying "sorry, I think it landed in the toilet." <laughs> I have to admit, I've never had that. I'm quite glad I've never had that. No, I have stupid things like uh, uh, who to, oh, Hermes. I've had Hermes deliver stuff, and I've sat in all day waiting for it. When I started this job, I had a couple of. Uh, polo shirts delivered because I literally owned no polo shirts and I, <laughs> I didn't want to go into work wearing any of my good t-shirts so and I, I sat in the house all day waiting for these things to be delivered and it wouldn't have been a problem because they could have launched over the fence if I wasn't in but like half past five got an email saying we attempted delivery uh, we will try again the next working day I was like motherfucker next working day is when I start work one and two, maybe most importantly, you haven't been to my house. I was here. <laughs> Plus, yeah. it's t-shirts. You could have thrown it over the fucking gate. <laughs> you twat bags. <laughs> yeah, I... 99% of delivery drivers are great. I've been one. And you take a lot of shit from a lot of people. And a lot of them are really good. And most of the ones that turn up at my door, really friendly... You know, you always get a smile and you're always polite, but some of them are just utter douchebags. You always get the one. One every maybe thousand orders. You get that that one percent dude who literally pulls his van up outside your property, types put writes the card, walks up to your door, makes it look like he's about to ring the doorbell, and then posts something through the post the card through the letterbox saying, Sorry, you weren't in and then yeah. walks off. That, that, that's over that, he drives past your house and paper boys it out the window into your door. Or well, you get the launches your DVD across the garden. Or you get the hilarious like uh, porch cam footage of a random UPS driver in America, and he's just pulled his van up, walked along, and then just drop kicked like he was punting a football <laughs> onto your drive. Awesome. And then and then walks off and kicks one of your plants over or something. <laughs> Or you get you get the fucking people, random stupid people out there with their driveway, or their pathway from the the road to their front door, which is some like curvy mess of of uh, of bricks. So you've got some stupid ass walk, so you don't walk on their fucking plants or their grass. And you just look at it and go, guys, you're being an absolute cunt to every single courier who now needs to navigate your fucking stupid path. And then you start wondering why people have started putting footprints in your fucking grass. <laughs> it's like, give them a straight fucking line. Yeah, it doesn't, it looks pretty, sure. But if you're going to keep buying stuff, surely you don't walk along the path like that. You you know your route where you don't have to stand and walk all the way around. You can step over the stuff that's there. These guys have clearly tried it. They were carrying something heavy. They don't want to fucking walk in a fucking stupid spiral. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love how angry you are about that. I'm angry about everything right now. Shop Tour <laughs> fucked me off that much. I've got that angry. Oh, dear. I'm surprised I didn't punch anyone today. <laughs> well, that wouldn't have been good. It was your first day back at work after Christmas. So, what well, John, how are you? This, how are you? How was your Christmas? Uh, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> wow. It's the first person I see. No, it was me. <laughs> that's that's why I walked over to you because I knew that if I saw you and I went to punch you, probably would have. I'd have got my fist about two inches from your face, and then I wouldn't have an arm. I pulled it off and hit you with it. <laughs> You'd been shouting, "Stop hitting yourself!" at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> I'd have made sure I was on CCTV doing it and everything. Beat me with a soggy end. <laughs> wow, that was an eventful Christmas. Yeah. And an eventful fuck, New Year. Fuck shop in it, and everyone looks like them. Yeah. And their mothers. <laughs> oh well, don't. I was absolutely gutted for you when you mail when you texted me yesterday said it being cancelled. No. So the worst part is Makes there's you're, actually you're struggling there's actually to find games, games coming to out. <laughs> there's actually games coming out on the Switch like right. tomorrow. I mean, they're, they're weird-ass, probably rapey Japanese titles, but... Oh, they definitely are. <laughs> but there's still new games coming out. I've struggled so much trying to find a fucking game to play. So Shop 2 have fucked over your uh, 2018 challenge already? Yep. It's, I've, had, I've proper fucked my 2018 challenge because I haven't been able to play anything, so I've actually just been playing the, the Doomsday Heist. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. When once the, the the challenge proper rolls out and there's actually games coming out, I'm going to disconnect my external drive and just use my uh, internal stuff. No. That way, I don't have any games from before this year to play. Fair I'm nice. just going to stick it somewhere. Did you know if you stick an external drive onto your Xbox One, you can record more than five minutes of gameplay? Yep. I had no idea, and now I know that I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's the only way that you can record. I think it's ten minutes though. I don't think it's a lot more. I think it's just that it's up to because... an hour. Really? Apparently so. I was, I was not reading it at work. I was reading on Reddit. Apparently, it's an hour if you put an external hard drive in. I'm gonna have to look into that because I've got an external drive plugged in. So unless it's a, an external drive that's oh, it, it you must need be to a... format. You can't format it for games. You need to format it for media. Yeah. So you'd oh, have okay. to have two drives if you're playing a game off the drive as well. Which yeah, for me is not a problem because I don't. I I try to keep the hard drive just clean and only yeah. play games off the machine. Well, until they have a proper benchmark for what's quicker, a uh, hard drive or internal memory for the for the One X. No. Because of the because it was uh what was the benchmark on the Xbox One and the S was that the external drives were quicker. Yeah. But I haven't seen anything for a proper one because some people have conflicted reports. It's like. They said, oh yeah, the Xbox One X uh, internal drives reads write speeds much quicker. And then other ones have said, oh uh, yeah, use an external. The USB 3 is still quicker. Fair enough. I don't, I, after I don't see any issue. I don't, I, you know, I've not seen a performance dip at all. <laughs> you know, there's, there's been no issues in any of the games I've played on my One X. I'm, I'm quite happy to run it you know, leave it running internally. Especially if it means I can plug a drive into the front and record gameplay to it in more than 10 minutes since. Yeah, if this, if it's the case that I can DVR stuff with an external drive, then I'm going to I'm gonna get myself a, a small R drive to plug into it, yeah. just for recording stuff. It'll certainly make doing the uh, the editing for you a lot easier because you don't have the, the chop at 10 minutes because that's all it can handle. Yeah. Plus, if it's up to an hour and you can get decent, I can actually get decent quality recordings instead of being the shitty, um, like, 540p stuff that at the moment this will be all it can handle if yeah. I want to do a long, long recording. It must be the internal memory, because you don't get the full terabyte, do you? So it can't all be OS that's the, uh, the added bit, so it must be... The, uh, it will be limited because... It's you the uh, 
the amount of space on your internal hard drive is not an exact number because you will have different apps installed, different games installed, different DLC installed, 4K texture packs maybe, you know, stuff like that. So it's a number that you can't you can't measure, you can't work against. So but plugging in an, an external, it doesn't matter if you fill it up because you're not going to negatively affect the OS. Yeah. Maybe you could partition an external drive so that it could do both games and media. I don't think the Xbox One's smart enough for that. No. Because I would absolutely go out and buy an 8 terabyte and then partition 6 for, six for games, 2 for media. Why not just do something slightly easier and stick a USB splitter on the end of it and put two hard drives in? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, if it can do that, that would be the simpler thing to do. <laughs> well, um, how long have we been talking for? We're talking for like forty minutes, and we haven't talked about games yet. True. Uh, <laughs> apparently, uh, the game DVR can use Swollen Two Five Six. So, if I, I might be able to get a like a thirty two gig, thirty two gig USB U three stick. Yeah, it might work. Hmm. Plug it straight into your computer. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Do I have... I think I might have a 32 gig USB stick somewhere. Yeah, let's try that at some point. I'll just plug it into the side panel, into the side USB port. Yeah. And I can just pull it out and put it back in. I'm okay. assuming that it put, pulls down in a decent format that can be... So I don't have to then upload to OneDrive and then transfer. Not that it's difficult. All right, just send out. Oh, excuse me. Just send it over to me. I'll be able to work it. Just send it to you in the post. Yeah, why not? <laughs> or <laughs> go full Hermes and just turn up saying, oh, sorry, you weren't in, and then drive off. Yeah. Or just don't, don't even drive near my house. Just text me and say, try to deliver it, and you weren't in. So I fly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> At a time when I know that you're at home. Exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway. Let's move on to what we've been playing. Brooks, I uh, I hear you've been uh, some play- playing some older games, as it uh, were. <clears throat> I, so I, uh, th- th- I'll talk about three, I suppose. Two very, very quickly. So the first game I played when I set up my TV was Need for Speed Payback. Okay. Uh I am really, really kind of enjoying Need for Speed Payback. I haven't finished it, and I've now sent the rental back. I'm not going to finish it, I don't think. Oh. Well, I did hit that wall that I hit with every racing game. Was My skill just cannot deal with the, the difficulty uh, slider for the AI. I just can't. Yeah. I suck at racing games. So, But I did when I, I... I was playing for a good 10 hours before I got to that point. You know, I got a decent amount of game time out of that game before I had to just stop. Uh, I might try and finish it if it when it hits the uh, the EA access fault because it will eventually. I'll keep my save. I'm not going to delete it, and I know the save goes from physical to digital because I started my game on the 10 hour trial and carried it on with the disc. <clears throat> but in 4K, it looks fucking gorgeous and sounds amazing. It was a lot of fun to play. Uh, I've also, I, I mentioned it earlier, I started an, a backwards compatible Xbox 360 game that hit the vault that last month. So I'm playing the original Battlefield Bad Company. Mate, Bad Company is fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, really good. Did you ever play Bad Company back in the day? I play. I didn't actually play Bad Company One. There was a Bad Company One sort of came out at the time when I thought Call of Duty was a really good shooter. That's fair enough. Yeah, because it was the first single player campaign in the Battlefield game, and everybody that had played Battlefield before that was going, no, "Not happy with that." No, no, no. And then we got even angrier because it was only available on console. Uh, Bad Company One never came out on PC. Yeesh. So. Yeah, that there was a lot of mixed feelings about that game. But actually, when you played it, it was, it's, it's so much fun. 
It's funny. It's fun to, you know, the shooting mechanics are fun. But I tell you what, <clears throat> game came out in 2008, so now it's 10 years old. Even in the last 10 years, we've been spoiled with shooter controls because the controls for this game are so dodgy. So dodgy. Like, changing tools is your bumper buttons. You know, grenades are one bumper button and healing is another bumper button. And, you know, it's back to old school where ducking is hitting the right thumbstick. It's, I, it took me ages to get used to it, but it looks fucking terrible. It looks ghastly. It looks like playing, you're playing an old Battlefield game. Literally, it's like when you when you uh, installed Battlefield 2 for the first time in five years and went, oh shit, this game is ugly. But like Battlefield 2, it still plays really well. I'm not going to touch the fucking multiplayer. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I tell you what I noticed, and as much as I'm trying hard not to chase trophies and achievements while I'm trying to do my game challenge this year have you noticed with the new well it's new, it's been like it for a couple, few months now there's a uh, chart in the achievements page on your Xbox One that tells you where you are compared to your friends for the month yeah yeah. so yesterday, or the day before like a day and a half into the month and so far it's only registered one trophy or two tro- two achievements and now the ones from another game it's not registering the achievements that I pick up on an Xbox 360 game oh well what what really annoyed me <laughs> as much like I say I'm not trying I don't want to do achievement chasing but what really annoyed me was I'm playing this game on normal if you play it on easy it's obviously easier to play but you don't get any achievements for finishing missions you only get them for doing it on normal and hard. I was like, I could have played it on easy and it wouldn't have made a fucking difference to my achievement count. Motherfucker. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about finishing games on normal and hard anymore. I just want to play the game. I just clicked normal because it was normal. Oh, fucking bastard. But yeah, I'm about, I think I'm a third of the way through. Maybe a little bit less. Uh, but yeah, really enjoying it. But the, the game I want to talk about, I the first my first completion of the year, I finally finished Call of Duty World War Two. Like you go finally finished a game that you were playing last year. Yeah, it still like, counts. I completed it this year. It still fucking counts. It's my challenge. I can do what I want. Damn straight. But yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't like it that much. No. No, it just. It looks pretty, and the shooting's functional, I guess. The problem was, it just felt like I was going through the motions. It felt like I was playing it because it was just this year's Call of Duty, not because I was enjoying playing it. Well, it it is this year's Call of Duty. But what I mean is, like, while everybody hated Infinite Warfare and Advanced Warfare, I... Don't say it, everyone hated it. Okay, most people hated Infinite Warfare and Advanced Warfare. I got to the oh. end of them going, I really fucking enjoyed my five, six hours of those games. I thought they were fun. And I enjoyed every minute I was in it. But this one, I just kind of went, yeah. I didn't hate it as much as I hated Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 was just fucking terrible. But it just felt bland. It felt like I said, I felt like I was just going through the motions. Like, Call of Duty's come out. I have to play Call of Duty. Here I am playing Call of Duty. Now I've finished playing Call of Duty. Uh, there was nothing. I will say, uh, it done as good a job as it could have done trying to be Schindler's List at the end. <laughs> uh yeah. Obviously, I won't spoil it for people that haven't played it yet. But like the the epilogue to the game does what it's intended to do. It, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to tug at your heartstrings. It's supposed to leave a lump in your throat. It's supposed to go. It's it's a. Like the rest of the game doesn't do it, but that particular bit is a very, very much a horrors of war 
thing and more importantly horrors of World War Two right because a lot of people seem to be forgetting that this was a thing because we have you know b become a bit desensitized to this kind of violence and, you know, it does try very hard for a Call of Duty game remember you know this this, this isn't a game that's really known for its level of sophistication it does at the end kind of give you the don't forget you know, we as a species did this to each other, and yep. we are fucking horrible people. It done that, and it it delivered that part very, very well. The rest of the game, nah. I don't remember most of it, and I only finished it a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year will be better. Maybe. You know, I didn't hate it. Just I wish it was more memorable. But literally, mate, that's why I, I... It's Call of Duty. You know what you're getting when you buy Call of Duty. It is exactly what you think it's going to be every time. It's Call of Duty World War II. You know, yeah. It's it's Call of Duty's desperate answer to the success of Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1, I think, was better. The, the Battlefield 1 story was a, a phenomenal. Yeah. The Call of Duty World War 2 story was... Adequate. It was cliche-ridden nonsense for a lot of it. Yeah. It was 100% <clears throat> classic World War II um, shooter. Yeah. Classic World War II story. It wasn't anything special to write home about. There are much, much better war films out there. Yeah. <laughs> Every time he, uh, the main character, Daniels, I've forgotten his first name. Red. Yeah, red. Every time Daniels like starts talking about his brother or to his brother, it, it all it's, his brother's name's Paul. But all I could hear in this, pa. it sounded like Pa. I thought he was talking to his dad. Yeah, yeah. that, that was my biggest issue. Because ba basically, he is Andrew Garfield from Hacksaw Ridge. Yeah, you know, that's what he yeah. sounds like. He's a farm boy in the war, but. Yeah, and the problem was the annoyance then went from, oh, you're talking to Paul, not your dad, and then I sit there saying to myself, just like you taught me, Pa, and then fucking hating myself for saying it. Yeah, <laughs> because then it's it's uh, it becomes Red Dead. Yeah. No, I was, seriously, I, I, I got so confused because he kept, he kept saying Pa, and then the other dude was going with little brother. Yeah. And I was just sitting there going, okay, which one is it? Is this some kind of like Midwest state? <laughs> what, what's going on? Maybe he's both. Is, it, is, it, is he brother, brother, father, father, brother? I, I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, I, that was my gaming for well, Christmas, really. I got yeah. my Switch and I've set it up and I've installed both the games I own for it and then didn't do anything. Because I wanted to sit and enjoy, and I, I've been wanting to finish Call of Duty, so I can talk about it on the podcast. So, yeah, Switch game will be later on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Twenty One Jump Street's on TV. And uh, okay, Ice Cube just can't stop fucking with Korean Jesus. <laughs> he busy. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got time for your problems he got, he busy dealing with Korean shit uh, classic film I fucking love 21 Jump Street I really like 22 Jump Street as well oh, I, I do don't know well. why I, I think it's great I don't know why I was like I feel like I feel like I'm one of the only like 60 people who liked 22 Jump Street I thought it was amazing absolutely brilliant I said my name is Jeff <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Yeah. Stop it. Right, games. No. I'm Back done. to games. Yeah, uh, are you yeah. you done? I think so. Do you not have a, another one you want to go into at all? No. Is there anything else? Are you done? I'm Everything's done. over? Yep. Cool. What have you been playing? So right. Because I was thoroughly expecting to be talking about how I bought a Switch and, you know, I've been playing 
brand new games coming out on the Switch for 2018. So all I have prepped is stuff that I played at the back end. So between the last podcast and before 2018. Yeah. I I between the last podcast and me and today I disappeared up to the north to see folks, you know, for Christmas, you know, spend time with family and the my mother's dog who is a delightful little sod. All dogs are. <laughs> yeah. Um but between him jumping and licking my face and you know falling asleep between me and whatever it was I was sitting next to. <laughs> uh, I was playing on my 3DS because I'm the sad fucker who decided to take a games console up to see fat, spend time with family. <laughs> you know, for the for the quiet times when you're just sitting there, you know, you're just eating dinner, everyone's half falling asleep, and they've got one of the various Christmas specials on the telly. Yeah. I'm not interested in any of the Christmas specials. Uh, there was a lot of because there's a lot of um, football or soccer as you'll for you, Brooker, uh, <laughs> and our maybe two American listeners. I love that I annoy almost everybody I know by calling it soccer as well. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, the 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 soccer games coming on, and I'm I'm a Spurs fan through and through. I don't get any pleasure watching most other games of football. Fair enough. So they're on the TV. So I just fire up. the The broadband up there is not particularly great. It's a, a noodle wire at that. It's like that you don't. They don't even get like two meg broadband. God, it's like the dark Classics. ages. I know it's fucking awful. You have to so, plug your 3ds into a windmill to get it to charge as well. Yeah. So play the 3ds. Turn the wi- wireless off so not to interfere with the Wi-Fi signal. You know, don't have to worry about it. Um, don't have to worry about anyone making a phone call and disconnecting you. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm sit- so sitting there playing my 3DS and I'm playing uh, Super Smash Brothers because it's a game that I've been threatening to pick up for such a long time. And a game that I was very, very, very fucking close to buying a Wii U for just to play one game. Yeah. Bec- and But the, the, the one thing that saved me was the fact that the Wii U just didn't drop in price. Like, the entire way through its entire life cycle. Even right now, I'm pretty sure they're still stupidly expensive. Yeah. I was I was sitting around waiting for that moment when the Wii U dropped to 150 or 120 or around that a respectable figure for the games console that it was because yeah. it was a generation old. Yeah. It was it was a generation old console uh didn't really deserve warrant the the, the 300 pounds that they wanted for it. No, it's just it's it's never going to go down either. It's going to be at that price forever. I'm just never, ever going to own a Wii U. I don't fucking want one now. I've got a Switch. I don't need one. Yeah. Well, I would... Con- I would. You know what? If Smash Brothers goes onto the virtual console and you can play Smash Brothers on Switch, I don't yeah. care which Smash Brothers. In fact, I would, I would take Smash Brothers Melee over most of, pretty much any of the other ones because Melee was fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's, I played Smash Brothers on 3DS, and you know what? It really showed just how fucking powerful the handheld it is. Yeah. It played fucking brilliantly, even with the 3D enabled. Yeah. Even with the 3D enabled, at max, and you're playing with some pretty fucking hectic characters that can fucking sprint around the stage, and others just making explosions happen. You know, Smash Balls, Pokemon coming out of your fucking ears and assist trophies. Yeah. That game is fucking hardcore to watch. But the 3DS handles it flawlessly. Okay. It looks pretty much as close to what I could remember Brawl being on the original Wii. Yeah. Because Brawl looked fucking spectacular. I I was expecting it to be similar to melee graphics, you know, go back to the GameCube days because I didn't think the 3DS was that powerful. No. But apparently it's powerful enough that it can run a game at graphics that the Wii was managing pretty much on that tiny little re- tiny little screen that it's got. Yeah. Fair enough. 
So I played Smash Brothers. I've unlocked some characters. I don't know how many I've got. There are there are a list of challenges, and one of them is the one of the ones that I've got facing me at the moment is unlock all characters. Yeah. And other than that, there's individual ones for unlocking specific characters and then using them so many times. So I'm somewhere between unlocking maybe some characters to unlocking all the characters. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can't remember how many I've unlocked. I've unlocked <laughs> Dr. Mario. Fair enough. And some, a lot of characters that I've never fucking heard of in my life. They're like There's like Fire <laughs> Emblem characters and Chrono Trigger or whatever the fuck it's called characters. Yeah. Uh, I've unlocked Falco from Star Fox okay, as well, yeah. and Ness, because apparently Ness was an unlockable, but Lucas wasn't from, um, fuck, what's that? Earthbound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it, what is it, Mother in Japan? It's got a weird. It's got a different <laughs> name in Japan. I, I know I'm talking to the wrong person about this it's, stuff. Yeah, you are. You, you need Matt. You, yeah. For, for Japanese Nintendo games, not me. But Smash Brothers is the. You know what's weird is I'm just 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 occurred to me that in my list of games of the year last year was a fighter. My first game I'm talking about in this year is a fighter. I'm not a fighting games person. Apparently you are. But Mortal Kombat, Stroke Injustice, and Smash Brothers, I would. Yeah, they they're deserving of my money. <laughs> Love Smash Brothers. Love just even the fucking shitty little classic mode where you go through and you select who to battle out of an option of three, and then the second to last battle is you versus a, a big wave of um, a big wave of enemies that die in one hit, yeah. and then you get your final boss is Master Hand or Master Hand Crazy Hand. Because because why the fuck not in a in a battling <laughs> game? Why isn't the final boss? a giant glove that you beat up. <laughs> yeah. If if sounds perfect. It is brilliant and I can't wait for Smash Bros on Switch. Is if it I don't buy Smash Bros on Switch, I can't imagine them not doing it. There's been a Smash Bros on every console. There's there was Smash Bros on the N64, the GameCube had Melee, Brawl for the Wii, Smash Bros for 3DS and and Wii U, which was a cross a cross game where you could play the Wii U version on the 3DS or it was the other way around or something you could connect the 3DS up to the Wii U yeah. okay. for some for some combination, I think it was how you unlocked a specific character right. I think there might have been something special about you had if you owned both then you got an award or something but Isn't I can't Pokken a fighting game? yes, Pokken tournament actually, funny story Pokken is currently the easiest way to install Homebrew to your Nintendo Switch. Okay. I... Not that not that Homebrew can actually fucking do anything on the Switch at the moment, but yeah. it's currently the way to do it. Yeah, I've not looked at Homebrew. I tend to not look at stuff like that at least until it's out of warranty. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the now is not the time to be installing <laughs> custom firmware onto no. your Switch because no. at the moment, for one, it's completely useless. Yeah. Because there's, it's region free, so yeah. it's not like you can just go out and go. Oh, I, I installed Homebrew so I could play uh, this game because it's not out in this country. Well, actually, it's yeah, you know, it's, it's region free now. Well, it's not like you the old days when you had to import uh, translated games from America. Yeah, but that's use, yeah, a, I've, use a freeloader cartridge. And I've I've got no interest in playing, you know, illegally emulated games or you know. Downloading, I, I don't do that. I, well, I try not to do that. I don't think I've played an illegally downloaded game in maybe 10 years. But I, I don't need it. I, yeah, it's the same as the Christmas argument from before. I'm, I'm, I have a job. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a grown up. If, if I you can't, game, it's like, it's I like, can buy it or I can rent it. You know? I can buy it. I can, well, yeah, we've got, we've both got massive, um, it's like, Matt, we've thrown massive amounts of money at Boomerang to, to rent games from them. Exactly. It's, it makes sense to to sit there with uh, to to buy your games to rent your games. You don't need to illegally download games. It's it's the same with films. Is that we're adults? It's like if we oh no we can't afford to buy this game. Oh well, I'll just I probably wouldn't play it before I get paid anyway. So I'll just wait till then. Yeah. It's like I know. Let's release a game on the th the twelfth of the month. 
<laughs> it's like by the twelfth of the month, I'm I have no money because all my bills come out before <laughs> the twelfth. Because again, I'm a grown up and I have bills. It's like release a game, up. release a game on uh, on the last Friday of the month, or release the game like on the third of the month when I might have some money still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the third of the month is perfect because your pre-order, you'll you'll take the money just as my wages are hitting my account. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> and I can briefly think that I'm rich. Yeah. All resorts to the classic. Um, buy your games off of Amazon and buy Amazon vouchers and just pay for them through Amazon vouchers. Yep. I've done that so many times when there's things that I've wanted to buy. And it's like, oh, that's about the time when my car's going to go in for its MOT service, car insurance, all that crap all at once. And you just look at it going, I definitely can't afford to buy one of those, so I'm going to buy this Amazon voucher now and pay for it that way. Yeah. Like the classic days of PayPal or having a pay-as-you-go credit card. or Oh, God, pay-as-you-go credit cards. Or do what, uh, fuck, um, one of my mates did for their Xbox One. They just bought uh, game vouchers. That's what, that, I did that. Yeah, but I, I'd say that he actually just paid for it in game vouchers. Luckily, he didn't buy his game vouchers online at £10 a pop. No. He bought. He just went into a game store and said, can I have a game gift card with enough money to buy an Xbox One X? Yeah. It was like 450 quid right off the bat. Nice. Just like bought a game gift card, four hundred fifty. So as soon as it was announced with the price, pro- with the price promise, he bought a game gift card. Didn't yeah. have a pre-order or anything. Just bought the gift card. <laughs> no, then I, uh, I when just, the pre-orders I... came around, and it was a twenty-pound deposit. Yeah, kind of, kind of fucked him over a little bit that way. <laughs> It'd have fucked him over more if he if he'd lost the fucking gift card. Well, yeah, absolutely. Probably he probably like framed it or something. <laughs> I put it in a safe. Fucking card with that amount of money on it. Yeah, it's just four hundred fifty quid, just sort of sitting there. It's free, free to a good home. Yep. Or well, if you're stealing a game gift card, it's not a good home. It's a bad home. Yeah. I can give an Xbox One a good home. Well, an Xbox One X would make any home a better home. Exactly. <laughs> so, Smash Bros. for three DS, good. Uh, I would. I'm desperate for the Switch version to get some kind of announcement, maybe. So, well, E3's only six months away. It's true. Uh, although Nintendo don't really have any E3 presence. Nah. But I bet, I bet we hear more about Pokemon <clears throat> at their E3. What do they call their things? The Nintendo Showcase. Showcase. That's the one. What's the other one they do? The one, they do like a monthly one, don't they? I thought that was the showcase as well. Maybe. I thought it was all Nintendo showcases. Maybe we need we need an actual Nintendo expert. We both are invested in the Nintendo universe now yeah. that we well no, you've we got a switch. A Nintendo, one of us needs to become a Nintendo expert. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I'm already an expert in enough things. I'm an expert in nothing. It's true. You are very much a jack of all trades. I do try. You're my expert in American football. Well, that's pretty much the only thing I'm good at. And films. Well, okay, yeah, and that. Uh, oh, mate, you know what? I'm so fucking glad it's 2018 and I don't have to keep count of my films anymore. How many films have you seen so far? What, this year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're really for, you're really struggling with this year's cha- uh, films challenge, mate. I mean, it's the third. You should, have at, least, you should at least be on six. Well... <laughs> I th- you know what? Last year, I'll 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 find my list. It won't, it won't take me a second. Cause last year, when I started my challenge, I fucking went into it whole hog as well. Like, what you like halfway by March? Well, there was or something there stupid. Was, there was no fucking around. We stayed up for midnight, obviously for New Year's Eve, and then watched the film. And then <laughs> film one at midnight. So literally, so on the first of January, I watched. The Expendables at midnight. I then went to the cinema and watched the Assassin's Creed movie. Came home and watched the Lego movie. Went to the cinema to watch Silence. Then went to the cinema to watch Monster Calls. Then came home and watched The Expendables 2. That was in one day. I'd done six films. And yet, so many of those were not very good. 
Uh, I like The Expendables and Assassin's Creed and the Lego movie. Silence is okay. And I fucking loved a Monster Calls. <laughs> Anybody that comes out of a Monster Calls not bawling like a baby is completely fucking soulless. I'm pretty soulless. <laughs> yeah, so, so this year's games challenge is going to be nothing compared to the, the shit I put myself through last year for for the films one. Yeah. I think an aside to my games challenge is that this year I might not buy any games. I might put entire... Do a year of shame. Well, no, it's... Um... I might. I still want to do nothing but games from this year. I don't particularly want to spend all of this year playing games from last year. Yeah. Or uh, that's preventing me from playing new stuff. But I think that I won't buy games. I will just sit them on the rental list because there's so many games coming out. I mean, like I went through the Boomerang list of the, all the Xbox One titles that were listed as coming soon, and right off the bat, there's like twelve games by the end of February. Nice. That's a lot of fucking titles to get through. Yeah, February and March is getting insane now. Last year's, I can't remember what it was we had, but last year's February and March was absolutely mental. Uh, For me, it was pretty much all about Horizon Zero Dawn, so I didn't care about much. Yeah, for me, uh, early in the year, it was what, Andromeda, so. Yeah. And be playing Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, which really really prevented me from playing anything from the start of last year that... You know what? There could have been some really good fucking games from the start of last year. I just didn't play them. <laughs> and I think that's the reason to why I've put so much focus onto really wanting to do a, a year of just playing this year's titles because then I can at least go, you know what? 2018, there were some really good games and I actually played all of them instead of going, 2017, there were some really good games, but I ended up just playing Andromeda. Yeah. And it ended up being on my list of shit games. <laughs> Same with Destiny 2. I played a lot of Destiny 1 yeah. last year. Really shouldn't have played a lot of Destiny 1 last year. <laughs> I think that actually probably helped to ruin my Destiny 2 experience was because of how good Destiny 1 ended up being at the end of the last year. Yeah. And Destiny 1's still a better game. Fair enough. Well, maybe you'll get to back end of this year and Destiny 2 will be a game worth sticking to. Well, uh, Destiny 2 on... Um, Twitch, I think I, I saw a, a news article for Destiny 2, and apparently Twitch streaming on Destiny 2 is a, an all-time low with a game in currently in essentially beta of PUBG being number one, and a free game at Fortnite is number two. <laughs> I think that's saying a lot to really to what people want in a game that yeah. Destiny 2 just isn't covering. Yeah, I still can't quite get behind PUBG. Mm. I just, I don't, I can't spend money on an early access game. Not that kind of money on an early access game. No. But maybe when it, you know, if it officially comes out. Maybe if they if they actually release a game that's going to be, you know, good. Because apparently PUBG is really fucking bad on Xbox. Yes, I've heard it's not very well optimized. Uh, I think it, was, it might have been Matt we were talking to on Twitter about it. He said it, it, it has issues. I really, I really want to play Fortnite, and I really want to get into Fortnite's battleground, sorry, battle royale mode, which is Fortnite does PUBG. Yeah, but. No, I don't want the online games. If I can't, if I can't see a credit, a set of credits roll, I can't call it a completed game in my challenge. So, <laughs> multiplayer games will have to take a bit of a back seat for a bit. I think. Well, maybe if they get a Switch release when the online stuff happens, then we can both get Fortnite on Switch, and it'll be yeah, and we'll both have a Switch. I'd be down for that. Hopefully, we both have a Switch by pos- Hopefully, by the end of this month. Yeah. Yeah, I I think after the disappointment of not getting my Switch, I might, before the next episode, buy one. I just need to sort out the 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 shit that's going on. Currently, two hundred and seventy nine pound in Argos, and you can get uh, cash back from Top Cashback for it. 
Can I buy Argos vouchers from Amazon? <laughs> I do not know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I got really excited the other day. Uh, I was reading about... It might it must have been on one of the horror websites I was on. Okay. Uh, and they were talking about this, the upcoming single player for the Friday the 13th game. I was like, finally! A I, single player for Friday the 13th? Well, be- this, okay. See, this is the problem. I, I got really fucking excited. I was like, finally, I can play this game. I can play it in 2018. I can, I can call it a game that I finished because it will have a single player. Uh, no. When they say single player, what they actually mean is offline bots. I was like, oh. I don't think you understand what single player means. That's not a single. That's not a single player campaign. That's playing multiplayer on your own. Bastards. Well, offline bots. Okay, maybe depending on if you can set yourself a difficulty for uh, for the bots. Yeah. But okay, you got, you grab your offline bots. That's that's that sounds awesome. In theory, you you set your difficulty. You need to find the right difficulty. Where you don't well for a game like that, offline bots is great for things like so you can learn the maps and you can learn how the yeah. game plays. Because if you jump into that game not knowing what the fuck to do, you're going to ruin your game and everybody else's game is going to be shit. But you know, offline bots. I haven't used offline bots regular since Killzone Mercenary <laughs> when I was I was using it to grind for trophies because they're just the online community just wasn't there to do it online. So, offline box it was for my, you know, I think 100,000 kills or 10,000 kills or something you needed to get, and fuck me, did it take ages. And collecting money, you had to collect a million whatever the currency was. And you got like 10 for a kill. So, fuck you, dudes. (laughs) It's taking the piss. But, yeah, I, I was absolutely gutted. Absolutely gutted. But yeah, I, I I want to play Friday the 13th. But I don't think I can this year because I won't be able to finish it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just... I do like the idea of Friday the 13th with a single player Friday the 13th game because there aren't enough ga- asymmetrical games where you play as the guy as opposed to, you know, it's you versus the, the enemy... The, 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 the guy. Yeah. But it's basically, uh, it's basically Evolve without big monsters. Yeah. It's the same arena-based combat uh, theory. Just you need to find car batteries and shit so you can escape. Yeah. Can't, I, I can't help but feel like there needs to be more games where you play as the, the, the element of horror in a horror game. Yeah, the uh, Friday the Thirteenth is probably the perfect one though, because Jason's just this enormous supernatural character that can do absolutely anything. Yeah, there's only there's only a couple of other franchises that have something like that, and I don't think they'd be half as fun. You know, you can walk around as Michael Myers from Halloween, but it's not a dude in a hockey mask and a machete. Yeah, like. <laughs> I suppose. I'm and trying to think from a fan's point of view, it's not Kane Hodder doing the. Uh, there's the dog. Yep. <laughs> it's not Kane Hodder doing the motion capture. So, yeah, I'll I'll take Friday the Thirteenth. But yeah, if I if I find it cheap, I might pick it up and install it and just pick it up on occasion to play. But yeah, no actual single player. It can't go onto my challenge. Wasn't there another like similar style, asymmetrical? Nightmare game where I think there was a DLC character might have been Michael Myers. Uh, uh, part of me wants to say Dead by Daylight. Possibly. I've not played Dead by Daylight. I know. I think I only know one person that has played it and really liked it. But he played it in early access and said it was janky. But I, I'd love to see a a game where it's you know what let's grab all of the famous horror like um characters so you get your 
your Jason, you get your Michael Myers, you get your Leatherface, get your um I don't know, let's let's throw Alien in there. Maybe <laughs> maybe even fucking Predator. And ha- and have an, an asymmetrical well, nightmare game. I would play that. You know, you, you you're you're the one on their own could pick based on the map or based on what they think that the their the other people are going to pick and then you know you, the one whoever that they all have their strengths and weaknesses yeah so and add you Fred, uh, Freddy Krueger as well yeah Ghostface yeah um Pinhead yeah I would definitely be okay with that fuck it throw the Candyman in there as well <laughs> it's just a, a licensing nightmare you're you're uh, trying to develop there oh yeah well, it's like um, this is completely different, but a licensing issue being the uh, the Jump franchise uh, in Japan. There's a a, a fighter uh, in the Jump universe, similar to the style of what Smash Brothers is. Yeah. But they can't release it anywhere else because the Jump franchises aren't marketed over in America or Europe under Jump. They're marketed under like Bandai and like. Uh, and like 17 other different companies. Yeah, well, it's, that's the same. <clears throat> excuse me, that's the same issue with like all the horror things. That's why there's the, one of the Jasons is missing from, or at least one of the Jasons is missing from Friday the Thirteenth because they can't get the license to use that particular likeness. You know, these these films are in absolute hell when it comes to licensing. It's why like you get box sets that are missing films because different distributors have different rights to them. It's how this shit ends up in such a mess. I don't... Well, clearly the solution is for Disney to start buying more fucking companies. It really <laughs> isn't. I, I don't want my Friday the 13th and my, <laughs> and my Halloween's baby fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe, not, maybe another company out there that just goes, you know what? I've got a lot of money. And there's a lot of horror films out there that probably should all be fed under one umbrella. Well, somehow Blumhouse have gotten hold of the rights to make a new Halloween movie. So I'll let them do it, because I have a lot of faith in, in uh, Jason Blum and his company. It's uh, what, the the shitty Freddy vs. Jason film? Freddy, Freddy vs. Jason was awesome! <laughs> Don't give me it. That, that was fucking amazing. It was made by the guy that made 51st State and Bride of Chucky. Yeah. I fucking loved that film. And the 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 really ass spin off that wasn't an official spin off, which was Freddy versus Jason versus someone else. Yeah. I can't remember who it was. But yeah, they uh Or it might have been Freddy versus Jason on Halloween or something stupid like for a name. But like Freddy versus Jason was in, in development hell for so long, that's how we ended up with Jason X in space. <laughs> yeah, Jason X. They just went, We need to make another Jason film. Uh, and this one's not happening. Why the fuck are we talking about films? I don't know because <laughs> because we need to have a decent <laughs> horror game, or we need to have a decent. Well, yeah, we just need to have a decent horror game where you get to play as the the horror element, as not just yeah. not just some guy walking through a house and being terrified to can't can't go down into the basement. Yeah, you need you need to be the invincible, super duper bad guy. That would be fun. Yeah. I think it's why I like Left 4 Dead so much because you got to play as the zombies. Yeah. Like the, spe- the being the special zombies on Left 4 Dead really really helped that game I think a lot because otherwise it's a really shit zombie shooter that just happens to be made by the fucking Valve. Yeah. <laughs> Using the fuck what engine they use? What engine do oh, they sh- use? Shit, why can't I remember that? Was it their own one? I think so, yeah. I'm not, and now I can't remember. I'm not I can't remember. it at all. Now I can't remember what the fucking engine's called at all. Wow. <laughs> Source engine. Yep, that's the fucking... So, fucking hell. Just fucking know that's the, it's the only engine that Valve use. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I just <laughs> mined such a blank then. Yeah. Right, yeah, but... Left 4 Dead would have probably just fallen apart if it wasn't for the fact that you got to play as the 
it was four versus four yeah. and unlimited supply of zombies. <laughs> Bit like a uh, it's like the humans and zombies equivalent of spies and mercs. <laughs> yeah. So I think that kind of brings us to a, a really weird end to what we've been I think, playing. I think we ended this like 15 minutes ago. We've just been talking it's about like, films ever since. Just, just, just talking about stuff that I really don't have that much interest in, but for some reason can talk about it for a good 15, 20 minutes. Ah, why not? Uh, let's go with the classic finish of Games to Recommend. Brooks, you got you pick, you got one? I do. I just got on to PlayStation Plus this month, so all, for all of January you can download for free-ish uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Awesome. Yeah, I, you and me spoke about it a lot when we first started this podcast. A really fucking good game. Not quite as good as Human Revolution, but a really good, really good game. And yeah, for free, more or less. Free yeah. is definitely a good price for a game that you should have spent thirty quid on when it came out. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I can't recommend Mankind Divided enough. It's really fucking good. Just as a whole, if you've not played Deus Ex, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> it is one of those games that if you're not, if you don't know what it is, and you look at a trailer for it. it you, if you think it's just a shooter, you might go, eh, not that interested. It's a, it's a tough game to market, because it's one of those games, because you can play it however you want. For me, it's a stealth action game. But for someone else, it might be an action shooter. Yeah. But you can't get that across in a 30-second TV spot for the general public. No, no, you're right. It's... It's difficult to market based on the fact that it's not Splinter Cell. You don't just walk around, you know, being super stealthy in a, a light-up backpack when people can see you. Yeah. So, you know, so if it's coming at you for free, you know, go buy it. And then buy the season pass, which will cost you a tenner, and support the guys that made it, because I yep. are awesome. Yeah, the, they need a lot more money than what they've earned. Yeah. If, the, if if a company can put out games as good as what Deus Ex is, and then they definitely deserve a lot more money than what they've got. Yeah. Especially considering the amount of money that companies like EA get for putting out games like FIFA and Battlefield last year. Yeah. But yeah, that's my, my recommendation is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. I'm going to go with uh, recommending... Uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary, which is the backwards compatible game with gold. Ooh. Yeah. I forgot that was coming. Yeah, it's uh, free from the 1st of January, so it went up on New Year's. Yeah. And it's free until, I think, the is the 361's end of the month? Uh, I think... I'm not sure. Because I think the... I think... I'm pre- I think the 360 title's end of the month... And the Xbox One title is until the 15th when the new one takes over on the 16th. Yeah. And I think that the the X, I think the backwards compatibility ones are 30 days, and I think that the the current gen ones are 15 days. I think that's how it's worked out. Yeah. So anniversary, there'll be a new another backwards compatible title on the fifth on the 16th that will last until the 15th of the following month. Yeah. Oh no, Underworld goes off. On the 15th, because uh, on the 16th, Army of Two becomes free. Okay. And so I'm just kind of looking at Wikipedia. Try to. And yeah, the Xbox One one. Okay, so we have two Xbox One games. Yep. Uh, and one goes from the 16th to the 15th, and one goes from the 1st to the 31st. So halfway through the month, one of them changes. Yeah, okay, so I got it the wrong way around then. Yeah. So it's, it's the current Gen 1s is 30 days, and the, and the, they have a flip over yeah. every other 15 days. And then it's the, the Tomb Raider and Army of Two, which I can't wait for. I'm really looking forward to replaying Army of Two. I fucking yeah. love Army of Two. <laughs> I actually want to play it with you on the grounds that we can then talk like proper um, military guys. Shut Tango down. First time you shut you... Tango down, I'm unplugging everything. <laughs> like, just... the, I'm turning the internet off. <laughs> uh, can yeah. I say Tango? Can I say Tango down? 
if I put down a tin, a can of uh, orange beverage. If you can prove it's a can of tango, then yes. I will take a picture of it. <laughs> I will. I will make audible noise of me drinking, and then you hearing the clink of it hitting the hard floor, and then me saying tango down. Even then, if you do that, the next time I see you, I will hit you with a bottle of Lilt and make you drink that forever. No, not Lilt. No anything, tango. anything but Lilt. <laughs> Dr. Pepper it is. Uh, it's not much better. <laughs> uh. So, ending on a nice sugary surprise. As they all do. <laughs> uh... Brooks, where can people find you when you're not um, rambling on about horror films on a video games podcast? I am on Twitter at Brooker411, where I talk about the games I'm playing, the films I'm watching, and the things that are pissing me off. <laughs> Pretty much everything is where I spend an unhealthy amount of my free time. My wife over in the corner of the living room nodding as I say that. <laughs> you have to be a good boy this year, Brooker. Okay. Otherwise, you won't get any Christmas presents. I just buy my own like I did this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, now she's going to hit me because she'll think I said something really offensive. It's definitely going to be your fault as well. She's definitely going to punch you in the dick when she sees you. Oh, I like that. It's, I, <laughs> I don't. I don't want it to be hurt. <laughs> what you meant? You anyway. liked being punched in the dick. <laughs> Well, you know, the the right person came along, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> kind of got away with me a little bit. Yeah. What, so, what about you? Where can people find you, mate? Uh, you can find me on Xbox Live as Long Dong Silver. Twitter is the John underscore CU, and on not on Switch. Oh. I'm still sad about that. I'm not. I'm not giving people my. This is the one thing Nintendo can't fucking get right. They still have friend codes. Actually, the thing that Nintendo can't get right is the fact that you can't publicly show off your Switch friend code. Yeah. If you put, I because uh, used to be uh, there used to be a Nintendo forum, and if you put your friend code anywhere on it, they would ban you. Really? Yeah. Fuck's sake. Because you're not allowed. It's like friend codes are for friends. That's why it's called a friend code. But my friends you... list is for friends. I don't only have friends on there. It was a, It's like a really, really shit uh, parental control from Nintendo themselves saying that friend codes are for friends. <laughs> Therefore, you're only supposed to tell your friends your friend code. You can't just tell random strangers. That way, random strangers can't then, you know, groom you over the Nintendo network. Oh, Which I suppose is a good a good thing because otherwise, you 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 know, you've got your your twelve year olds on it on playing Call of Duty, and then. But getting touched up by the 45-year-old uh, bloke on the other end. But what if I want to be groomed by a 45-year-old man in an old rusty red van? Well, then you just need to walk down the street and find the one that says free ice cream. Yeah, that could work. Or free candy and naps. <laughs> well, we, uh, this took a dark turn. <laughs> yeah, it's what we do best. <laughs> it really is. We go, we go off of topic so many times. It's unreal. This is why we had to go off on our own. This, yeah. <laughs> because we just we don't have a subject anymore. We just talk bollocks for an hour and fuck off. Yep. It's what we do best, and it's better <laughs> that we can do that because now we don't have to spend ages going through. You don't. Well, no, I say we. You don't have to spend ages going through and removing half of the shit because I just, I don't it do just that wouldn't anymore, work. Because I, every time I cover up bit of language of a song it gets copyright struck on youtube <laughs> unless it's psycho stick who apparently okay with all of the uh, all publicity yep that's gotta love I, those guys psycho stick. i obey the beard it's true like they tell me to so psycho stick are the greatest band known to man <laughs> not sure i'd go that far but yeah <laughs> so if you don't want to uh, look after us individually and you only care about us as a group, me and the Brooker man, uh, you can find us on Twitter as uh, Character Unlock, on Facebook at Character Unlock, on Instagram at Character Unlock, YouTube, a theme going on here. YouTube of Character Unlock. 
uh, our Podbean is Character Unlock. Uh, our website is characterunlock.com. Yeah. Is there any other Character Unlock places that you can think of? We probably have something there as well. Yes, we're getting a Bebo account next. Well, I didn't want to say that I'd already opened up a MySpace page, but, you know. <laughs> I don't know, is MySpace even a thing? I think it is, still, kind of. You can find us on MSN Messenger as Character Unlock. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Just no. <laughs> find us on the Napster forums. <laughs> If if you go onto LimeWire and type in character <laughs> unlock, you can illegally download. Find us on the MIRC chat channels. <laughs> Hashtag character unlock. Just need to open up a character unlock 4chan page now. Oh god, no, we do not. <laughs> I'd rather slam my dick in the car door. If you buy another TV, your wife will do it for you. Then I will buy another TV. So I will get something out of it. <laughs> Uh, so that's at the end of another episode and Lee if you're still listening sorry for being the one hosting it Brooke will do it next time I promise (laughs) say goodbye Brooks goodbye Brooks bye everyone bye everyone